And welcome back to the workshop. So today, actually over the past few days, I've been working on this project here and I finally got it finished. So I'm ready to get this video out to y'all. And uh, what this piece of art is, is um, so it's nine layers of eighth inch, three millimeter Baltic birch plywood that was stained tinted colors and whatnot. It's kind of borderline more of a paint. But as you can see in this picture right here, um, it turned out really good. You'll get some close ups later in the process, how it was actually built. I built the frame for it from scratch. Also, there was hard maple that I painted uh, to kind of go with the blue, uh, the gray and the white, whatnot. So stick around. Uh, remember, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed, click that notification bell. If you don't like something, leave it in the comments. Let me know what you think. I make mistakes. I try to address those things when I do, but uh, I hope you enjoy and stick around till the end and I'll see you later. So to kick this project off, I started by uh, cutting down a sheet of, uh, it was a five foot by five foot sheet of Baltic birch plywood, uh, three millimeter, so about eight inch thick. I actually ended up using the whole sheet for this project. So this little square that I'm cutting right there um, was uh, for one layer of the nine layers. So, so yeah, once I got all those uh, sheets cut down, well, that one sheet cut down into the nine pieces, gave everything a... Uh, a rough sand down to uh, 220, don't need to go too much. That's really just so it's got a nice clean surface, number one to stain, but eventually so anything that's not stained can be masked and everything will stick to it. The stain that I'm using, the Minwaxy uh, tinted ones, um, I'm gonna be honest with you, they're, they're kind of a, a real pain to work with, um, especially if you're staining a big PC, they tack up quickly and you gotta wipe uh, within a minute or two of putting it down. So if um, because of how thick it is, it's it's just kind of a, a nightmare on big stuff. If you're doing really small stuff, it's not that bad. But uh, I went back over a couple of the, the white sections a little bit because I didn't feel like it was really taken very well. And I guess the trick is is to put it on heavy so it doesn't dry and then wipe before it starts to tack up. But it's, a, it's kind of a race to do that. So got all these... Uh, Stained up, I had to do the white ones for four pieces of that, then the blue ones, uh, there were four for that. And then there's also another one that I do that is the, uh, it's supposed to be a black color, but it actually turned out like a dark grayish brown. But in the end, you'll see it kind of turned out all right. Um, for the colored pieces, minus the really dark one, I actually ended up masking them so I can, uh, Go ahead and laser them and then just peel off the masking later and not have to touch up no scorch marks or anything like that. So we got our nine pieces cut here. Uh, I honestly have no idea how this is going to turn out because I'm kind of disappointed with the, the stain stuff. That's supposed to be black, classic black. I probably should have just painted these, but we're going to go ahead and with it, you know, as a trial and see 
uh, how the colors turned out, not quite as vibrant as I would hope. But I need to get the masking off of these eight pieces, so I'm gonna go ahead and knock this out real quick, and then we'll start stacking them and see kind of how it looks. So during, and during that last part, just before I get to gluing up here, uh, you notice uh, there's actually a blue piece on here now because over on the side there, uh, I had the top layer sitting there. So this is actually what it looks like with all the pieces on here. Not glued together yet, but we're gonna do that right now after this, but I wanted to give you a preview of what it actually will look like. For uh, gluing up all the layers, I'm actually using a, a type of super glue, and actually I use quite a bit of it because there's so many layers and the pieces are so big. This I don't use regular wood glue. I'm going to try a few other adhesives here soon because um, and it, just when these big layers, regular glue takes too long to set up, and nine layers glued together, I was able to knock this out in probably like 20 or 30 minutes of actually messing around, clamping, let it set for two or three minutes with weight on it, then move on to the next piece, so rinse and repeat. Uh, it actually wasn't that bad. I had a friend over. I'm yammering in between everything, so um, not too bad there. All right, welcome back to my incredibly messy workshop. So what you see right here, I finally got it glued together, got a couple coats of lacquer sprayed on it, and I'm pretty pleased so far with how this has turned out. It's got sufficient depth to it. It's just over an inch thick total, uh, nine layers, so you can guys see here, but this piece, since uh, it's got square, square sides here, I'm actually gonna make a frame for this that this is gonna recess into with glass over the front and you know, so it's nice flush on the wall and the edges look nice and, and professional. So I'm gonna pull down some hard maple because it's uh, probably the most inexpensive hardwood I have on hand. And since uh, I know I'm, I'm probably going to hell, but I'm gonna paint it white uh, for this piece. Um, but it's hard maple, it's cheap. So I'm gonna do that. Let's get some lumber cut down and make a frame. I probably could have gone a lot cheaper with this frame and maybe bought something off the shelf, but since the piece itself was over, well, it was just about an inch and a quarter thick, I needed for the thickness of the glass also, and then a spot on the back of it for a little bit of a kind of recess there so the mounting hardware for hanging it wouldn't cause the frame to stick out from the wall. Um, I just happened to have this eight quarters off cut from a cutting board project laying around and it was long enough to create the four pieces. So rough cut them down, run them through the drum sander right here, and then uh, I get on to actually cutting um, on the inside of the frame, the, uh, the recess in it um, with the actual lip that'll kind of keep the glass in it at the front. I'm not even actually sure what the technical name for that is, but so cut a little slot in all the pieces here. And then what I'm gonna do is flip them over here on the side and then cut off that, that piece and then I'll create the kind of recess in the sides there. So easy, easy day there. Uh, probably could have used the router, router table, all that stuff, but it's easy enough to just cut these pieces off and do it in two cuts. When I uh, cut my frame pieces, so each opposing side, I usually, uh, once I rough cut them, then I go back and cut them both at the same time so that I know left, right, and then top and bottom are all the exact same size. All right, I got my four frame pieces right here, test uh, fitted to the piece right there. Um, I'm gonna get these fit up, get some glue on there. I'm gonna get them in the, the band clamp right there and I'm, I'm gonna kind of cheat it. I'm just gonna uh, actually do it upside down and then I'm gonna fit that in there because I intentionally made it with a slight gap around the edges so I'll be able to actually position that in there after I get the glass cut. I didn't do the de decorative uh, routing on the outside of this. I'm going to do it after it's done. Uh, also kind of cheating it also, but let's get this glued up, get it put in clamps to do that so we can get, uh, get moving on this. So after uh, gluing up the frame here, um, I don't have the video clip of it, but what I did after this, I got everything glued up, clamped up. Once the glue dried, I went back with my domino joiner and actually in the back of the frame across uh, all four um, 
miters, I put a domino in each one of those sideways with the grain going across to strengthen them, kind of like a biscuit or even splining a joint, but it won't be seen, it'll be painted over. Now, when I went to route these actually to do, I decided to keep it simple because I didn't want a decorative edge taking away from the actual piece of art itself. So I decided to just do a uh, 45 degree bevel. Well, as time went on and I realized I want a deeper, a deeper, more significant bevel on this, I was like, I thought to myself, I should have just done this on the table saw. I'd done just a 45 degree cut chamfer, you know, on the sides be done. Instead, I just kept raising the pit and taking more off until I was happy with it. Could have saved so much more time had I just cut that bevel on the table saw. And to finish everything up, gave everything a good sand on up to 220 grit and hand sand the inside there. Uh, but I got to tell you, I got to painting it, so I, I was just going to spray paint it. And I used this Krylon, you know, this five sticks five times better uh, stuff from Lowe's. And I don't know if I got a couple bad gans or whatever. And despite shaking it for minutes on end, it seemed like the first one I, I started spraying just came out like water. And it was, you know, very light coat started running everything and it was i had to go back wait for that to dry it took the better part of a day and then scrape and sand that off and then come back and do a whole bunch of very light coats over the course of about a day so it ended up taking about two days to finish this, a frame which you know kind of killed me inside but it is what it is and you know we we got it fixed and of course once uh, everything was said and done with the finish i was happy with that went back, fitted it in here, and then installed the uh, hanging hardware on the back. So I used uh, pretty much just your average large picture rings with uh, two screws and then hanging wire in between those to hang it on the wall. It turned out all right. All right, so as you can see, it turned out actually really well, a lot better than I was expecting, especially, so I think I mentioned it earlier, I was not liking how that stain was, was working on those large pieces of wood. I don't know, I had different results when I was doing small pieces by hand uh, previously. But I gotta be honest with you, the color pops a lot more than I thought it was, is especially the white. The white did not look like it took very well and it still looked very dingy, but it actually works very well in this. And, since I actually made that frame, which painting was a nightmare, as I mentioned before with the spray paint, but it finally, for the most part, cured up uh, enough to actually put it in the frame, hang it up here, picked up a nice piece of anti-glare uh, glass to put in there, but uh, everything else came out surprisingly well. And I do like this, especially square frames, framing them now so you don't see the, the cut edges of all the layers. It looks a bit more professional. Just did a standard wire hanging method on there and I think it turned out pretty awesome and actually I'm debating whether I'm going to put this one up on my Etsy page for sale or if I'm going to keep it for myself or maybe make more, who knows. But if I do throw it up there, it'll probably be uh, up there a little bit just because of uh, the amount of materials and, and everything else. But once again, if you like this project, please uh, subscribe. If you didn't like it, something you disagree with, how I did something, which I try to mention everything, I, I know I should have done a different way as I go along. Um, feel free to comment down below, let me know, uh, and I'll try to make my videos better in, in the future. Um, but give it a like if you liked it, subscribe if you want to see more, or click that notification bell, and I'll get some close-ups of this. Uh, we'll see you next time.